Hello, good evening, and uh, welcome to my humble model railway. This might be a, a shorter one for tonight. It's just a little update on my um, on my tornado. Now, for those of you who may have seen my previous video, um, you'll know that uh, when I got this tornado and ran it and looked at it eventually, I discovered that there was one major uh, flaw with this. Now, this did not show up on the photographs, and oh dear, I'd wish I'd have... Uh, abided by my golden rule of uh, making sure there's sufficient photographs okay um i'm not going to send this one back because i've actually uh, solved the problem to a great great degree now but this could be an idea for any of you who've got uh, missing windows in your locomotives or you might want to say for example upgrade the uh the mallard that hasn't got any windows in it cab windows or cab glazing now what it turned out to be was that this um, inside the cab? And I'll show you uh, where we are in a moment. It's uh, it's a it's a complete piece. So on this side, you've got the actual cab glaze in there. Let me just get something to point with. Uh, just see. Pen will be fine. Okay, so. You've got the cab glaze in there, and there's a piece of cab glaze in there. That oh, it looks like it's all one piece, okay? Now, on mine, it was missing. Now, when I went to look for replacement body shells, I was thinking, well, probably just the easiest way to do it. I, I, you cannot get the glaze in as a separate piece. I've tried that. Um, you cannot get the um, a body shell one in. They all seem to have the, bod uh, the glaze in missing on the same side. Don't seem right to me, does it? You know, I mean, but I don't know whether they were made like it. I just do not know. Now, what I'll show you is uh, what's on the other side. We'll zoom in and then we'll get the locomotive up nice and close and personal. And you can probably, I don't even see them here. You've got glazing in that window right there. I'm focusing on it now. We'll zoom right in. Okay, I think we're focused on the locomotive there. So when you come round here, you'll see that there's glazing in the window there. Okay. Now there was no glazing before on this. Well, as you can see, there is now. Can get focusing on that bit a little bit better. Get pointing towards it. That's it. I just, now this tripod is getting is beginning to. Uh, I don't know. It's getting a bit uncontrollable now. I it's like I say, it's only an expensive tripod, so it's getting to lie in exactly the right position I want it to. There we are, so it's in the right position. So, uh, in this wind, in this one here now, there's a window. Okay. And if you see them here, see it glinting in the sun, or whatever, or in, in the light of the uh, video lights. You see there's a window in there now, okay. Now, the product which I've used for this is absolute genius. This was my absolute first attempt, okay? And I'm absolutely delighted with the results. I mean, it's not, I would say, it's not absolute perfection, okay? But I'm sure that with a little bit of further practice, this would be absolutely perfect, okay? Um, now, the stuff I've used to make these windows with, you, you'd think that I would have stuck a piece of plastic behind me, being glued it there, which you can do, actually. And um, I was thinking of doing that. <laughs> well, I saw this actually um, on the internet on replacing uh, glazing, and the product we're looking at, and I'm hoping we can do product showcase on this now. We don't have this on uh, these cameras. As long as you can get it focusing, there are glue and glaze, deluxe materials, glue and glaze. Okay, for making crystal clear windows and bonding canopies and most plastics. Now this will be ideal for uh, modern makers in all kinds of applications, okay? Um, when, when you stick in the windows, if you're using some glue, like super glue, for example, you'll find that, that will, uh, it will cause uh, frosting in the plastics, okay? This stuff uh, dries absolutely clear. And what it does is you can actually make a window out of it. If you imagine there, there's an applicator... Um, here you can see the, the blue applicator there on the side. That that goes onto the knot that comes off this piece here. Okay, so you've got a so I can demonstrate. So 
it does advise you actually once you've used this to wash the uh, the nozzle off we've got this applicator applicator here look and what you do is you can draw the window you draw it from the outside in okay with this I just you see I would do it like that from the outside in okay you draw the window and you end up quite amazingly with it fully glazed now it does come out in the beginning all kind of foggy and everything else it comes out white but then as it dries it clears now I've heard some people say that this is a uh, PVA glue but it's not it's, it's, it's different apparently to PVA glue okay but I think this product is quite genius because uh, using that method I was actually able to make the window now let me see if we can get focus in we'll get a closer look I'll try and show you what we're talking about where are we there we go we're on hook from there now oh and something else I would warn you about with these particular locomotives I was looking at body shells okay oh my goodness some body shells on eBay they want well they go for eleven pounds um in a shocking state some of them have got cracks digs out of them pieces missing they're obviously sold sold as spares or repairs I have they ever got to that state goodness knows but what I found was I mean was that uh, there's no problem with a lot of with the a lot of the chassis we'll turn the lazy susan round now that it's on here you'll see just down here there's a reversing rod just under the running plate see it just under there that's a reversing rod the number of ones I saw where they were broken off or just hanging off and in fact mine came off as well mine was mine was quite loose on there I've glued that on quite tightly now I'm hoping it's more permanently fixed because one of the problems is when you pick the model up like this okay if your thumb goes in enough it's going to break the reversing rod off and also when you try to put out of the box there you tend to I tend to grip it by the running plate when I'm pulling them out well you would wouldn't you well, I do anyway and uh, of course if you do that you'll pull the reversing rod off okay uh, but anyway that's another issue but here we go let's pick this one up and I'll just show you what we've got now I'm going to try and do this in such a way I won't uh, break that reversing rod again oh there we go I got it okay you can see in there there's a window that like, you can see clearly no, you can see in there it's just quite yeah, so that was where the side where the window was on and you come into here now I'm going to try and get around the other side uh, let's have a look uh, try and put the camera this way right ok we get focus see there's a window in there now and there's a window in there so the missing window has been replaced. That is still drying there a little bit. It, it did go on a little bit unevenly. When you look at that without too much light shine on it, it looks quite convincing really. Go out of focus again. It looks a bit like a bit of cellophane stuck in there, but it's not. It's like a solid piece of plastic. But it does look quite convincing. I say that was my first ever effort with it. I'm sure I could probably get that to look a lot more um more of a, an even finish. I'm quite proud of that really to be honest with you and that that is just a suggestion actually I mean what I've done there is I've managed to upgrade this model for very little cost and this I should imagine there's enough there to do dozens if you wanted to so if you had say for example um, an older model or a railroad model or with no where the glazing was never put in there or you had one where mine is like mine that had glazing missing you could replace the glazing Quite an amazing little product, really. It kind of, what it does, as you're going round the round the window, <coughs> sort of, not hard to explain, really, but you sort of like, see, you've got my fingers there. That's a pointer there. You're kind of like going round and round and round the window. Okay. And eventually the surface tension of the liquid fills up the gap. In fact, I did that one there, all in one go. I just put it... Um, one big blob in the window and it just uh I'll sort of quickly work that one round from the outside. That one was quite easy to fill that one there. From this distance it looks perfect. You cannot you you would not be able to tell 
That was not an original fitting, as far as I'm concerned. It looks quite nice, though. You see the glazing glints in there? Don't get focused on the engine. And this is uh, uh, we're going to talk in general about uh, locomotives as well, I suppose, in a little bit. Uh, and model making. Um, other applications for this, this gluing glaze. Obviously, you can use it to stick windows in. So if you've got, say, for example, the flush glaze, glaze of the carriages, and it won't stain you, it won't stain your windows. Uh, it, it won't do that. Also, it will be good, say, for example, if you're uh, into your model aeroplanes, uh, you'd probably be able to, uh, in fact, it does show that, you can see on the demonstration on the internet, on YouTube, you can actually um, glue in your, your cockpit and not get all that horrible fogging on there, which I got on my Spitfire model that I built. I, I, I got some polystyrene cement on the, uh, on the actual glazing of the cockpit and that sort of frosted over a little bit which uh, it looks awful in the end but you, you can you can do that and I suppose another thing you could do if you say if you've got could cut out a piece of plastic maybe you could stick that behind but I think that looks quite convincing from here now the more I look at this the more I'm pleased with it I kind of like I put I think what happened was I put a little bit thick around the edges around here right around the front so it does look a little bit uneven but it's come out quite nice, that. So I'm going to be practicing, actually, on uh, adding glazing to some of my models. Because I think it can, you can actually uh, improve your models a great deal. Now, I ordered this from Amazon. And I think it was £8 something, if I remember rightly. But, I mean, I was going to buy... Uh, there, There's a couple of bodies on the... On, on the uh, on eBay, which were in shocking condition. I think I only found one with a window on for that side. And but what you'd have to do there is you probably have to uh, somehow get that glazing out and then fit it in here. I mean, it would just just as easy to put this in. This uh, now it's looking better and better actually. While you look at it, I'm well, very pleased with the results now. Yeah, glue and glaze. Now, it's able to um, stand running. I've run this around. Oh, I found something, and it might be worth noting. I just did it, okay, and I thought, whoa, why won't why, 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 my, uh, it's running terrible, this. If you ever look at the uh, the front bogey on here, and you might say it's a schoolboy error, and it is, very much so. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can show you properly. Make sure that the um, the bogey hasn't turned right round. My bogey turned round, say, 180 degrees, whatever, or whatever you want to say, three, yeah, 180 degrees. And so the, those, those little cow catcher things, wherever they are, they, the irons are pushing these off the track. They were on the back of the uh, back of the bogey, and I couldn't figure out what's wrong. I mean, from the side, it looked absolutely perfect. And I thought, oh no, what have I done? Anyway, that was a, that turned out to be the problem. I'm a derailing. So if you do have, if you are a derailing with problems with your tornado, um, then check you haven't done a. I mean, perhaps you might say you wouldn't do a schoolboy error like that, but I did it, and I don't mind admitting to it. It's okay. So there we are. That's the results of gluing glaze. Okay. So we'll have another another uh, look at this a minute. Let's get that round the camera around here a little bit so we can get a suitable angle to look. Uh, I'm trying to pick this up without breaking that reversing rod off. Okay, so we can get this. Uh... It's nice, sir. Eh? That's a nice little result. I mean, the light's so nice, it does look a little bit uneven now. But for a first attempt, I think that's quite nice. And then you've got the window in there as well. Okay, so what I would say is then, thanks very much for watching, okay? Now, what I didn't want to do, I didn't want to film myself actually doing this repair, okay? Because I think, well, it's, it's enough, uh, it was enough pressure doing this for the first time without trying to film it at the same time. What I might do, actually, is when I get a chance, I might actually get one of my older locomotives 
And I think if I think if you make a boo boo, you can get all this stuff off anyway. But um, I get an older locomotive, and I'll film a demonstration. And if you do use this stuff, please be patient, okay? Um, I don't know what to do with it being colder weather at the moment, but this took ages to go dry and clear, okay? For it to clear, it starts off kind of a kind of a white colour, but it did it did take quite ages to clear, so it's looking like this now, okay? And because it dries clear. I mean, I think um, it doesn't show up too badly if you want a little bit of overspill. You can get the overspill off with water and a cotton bud, apparently. Okay. So, what I should do is I should say, um, if you like watching this video, uh, please uh, press the like button. Um, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, I've just gone over 300 subscribers. Now, I haven't done a subscriber special yet. Because when you get just um, oh, slightly over a certain landmark, the the um, number of subscribers can fluctuate. Now, I don't know whether people have been unsubscribing from my channel. Maybe they found out it's not for them, which is fine. You know, not, not uh, you know, we're not one size fits all, are we, in this world? Uh, but it's just I've just gone over three hundred subscribers, and I seem to be holding there now, so I can actually believe that I'm actually over the three hundred subscribers now. So. Um, what I do is I do a little subscribe, a little three hundred subscriber special. Okay, okay. So just just to recap, then I mean, um, the window fitted quite nicely. The reversing rod I glued back on again. That kept, keeps coming off. Kept, kept coming off under there. That seems to be held on quite nicely now. And uh, don't make the same mistake as I did. And somehow I managed to turn the front bogey around 180 degrees, so it was running backwards, and that, that's what caused uh, that's what caused the D-Ray one. Okay, so what I do then is uh, say, well, thank you very, very much for watching, and I shall bid you farewell, and bye bye.